Hi everyone, Jamie Sullins here, Star Director with the Cincy Family of Products. And today is session three, or episode three, of my series on recruiting. First of all, I want to apologize for the rumble in the background. It is laundry day, and I don't have a door on my laundry room. So you might get a little bit of background noise, and for that I apologize. But I wanted to come to you guys and talk to you just a little bit more about recruiting. So in the first section, first session of recruiting, we talked about getting prepared and getting your recruiting notebook ready. Session two, we talked about who you should be having these conversations with. Now today, let's talk about the actual conversations you are going to have with people about Cincy. And I want you guys to know that not everyone's conversations are going to be the same. Your story is different from mine, and every person that you talk to is going to be different as well. So these conversations will vary a great deal when you're talking to people about the Cincy opportunity. So first of all, let's talk about how do you open this conversation and how do you start this conversation? So of course, that's kind of going to depend on what setting that you are in. I think if it's someone that you don't know or maybe someone you haven't connected with in a long time, the easiest way to get Cincy into a conversation is to simply ask them what they do for a living. If they work outside of the home, um, what are they doing for a job? That's going to give you quite a bit of insight as to this person. You'll instantly know whether they like their job or not. You will instantly know whether it's a fulfilling job to them or not just by how they answer this question. And usually, if you're having a conversation with someone, if you ask them what they do, what are they going to do in return? Chances are they're going to ask you what you do. Now, if you are not doing Cincy full time, that's okay. I know that the majority of the people in the Cincy business, it is not their first time job. But that doesn't mean that it's not going to be the first thing that you talk about. So when someone asks you what your job is, a simple answer could be, well, do you want my fun job or my day-to-day -day job? So that's going to really intrigue them that you have two jobs. Obviously, you're passionate about one, and the other one is just a job. So that's a great way to answer if Cincy is not your full-time income. If it is, just proudly say, I'm a director with the Cincy Family Products. Have you heard of Cincy before? So always follow up with that. Have you heard of Cincy before? Yes or no, simple answer. And then you can lead into, if they've heard about Cincy, you can lead into, well, do you have a Cincy consultant that you work with? Again, these questions are going to tell you a lot about this person um, because I don't like to poach people from other consultants. Um, if they have a consultant that they're happy with, I'm honestly going to end the conversation right there. I mean, it might lead to some more small talk, but I'm not going to follow up a whole lot at that point. But chances are you're going to get an answer like, well, I, I bought Cincy from someone, but they don't sell anymore. Or, you know, my neighbor, I think she sells it. Um, so you're going to get a lot of answers of they don't have a consultant that they're working with consistently or, um, you know, they're just buying it at the fair or, or whatever. So that can lead into a great conversation of I want to be your Cincy consultant. So the next tip that I want to give you as far as recruiting. The next step in the conversation is going to be you gaining as much information about this person as possible. Don't even talk about the Cincy business. I mean, you could talk about how awesome it is, how it sends you on vacations, how it pays for your daughter's dance class, whatever it's doing for you. Whether it's just a fun night out, you could talk about that. But you don't want to actually talk about starting a business with them. You want to gain information. So ask tons of open-ended questions. You know, how did you get to that job? What's your favorite part of your job? Um, a lot of things like that. Do you have a family? What do you guys do in your spare time? Are your kids in any extracurricular activities? Again, gain as much information as you can because I want you to remember the word tiny and it stands for their interests, not yours. They are not going to join your Cincy team because you want them to join your Cincy team. It's just not going to happen. Um, they are going to join Cincy because of what it can do for them. 
And you can't even tell them what it's going to do for them until you know about this person. So spend tons of time getting to know this person. Perhaps you can bring up something like vacation. Where was your last vacation? When did you take your last vacation? Because for me, one of the huge perks with the Cincy family is the travel that I'm able to do because of the Cincy family. So to me, that's a powerful part of the business. Yes, it replaced my full-time income, but the, the most fun is the travel that I get to do. So I'm going to market that to someone heavily. So the next part of the conversation, I really, you know, it's gonna go tons of different ways. As you get to know more about this person, you're gonna be able to hit on different aspects of the Cincy family. Be authentic, just be yourself and have a good conversation with someone. Don't try to market this business to them. I want you to be really careful to not have diarrhea of the mouth. Sometimes we want to tell people too much. They don't care who the owners of this company is. Um, they don't care. There's just lots that you might tell them that they just really don't care about. And so it's going to do a couple different things. Number one, they might be like, oh my gosh, oh, it's just another sales pitch. She's telling me things I don't even care about. Um, and they're going to shut off. The other thing is they're just going to be annoyed. You're wasting their time. Let's face it, that people are busy and they only want to have conversations that they want to have. So don't tell them more information than what they ask you. Um, tell them what it's done for you briefly and then find out what they want in life, what they want to be different about their life and talk about how Cincy can afford that to them, whatever it might be. And then the third part is, so we've started the conversation, we found out a lot about them and so we could work it into the conversation how Cincy could benefit them. The third part of the conversation is just sealing it up. And it's gonna be a simple statement like, hey, I'm always looking for new team members. You should consider it. No hard push, no um, over the top uh, song and dance. Just as simply, hey, you should think about this. And what's even better is, Wow, I can tell that you really want to be able to do more for your kids. Something like Cincy could make that happen. You should think about joining my team. Or, oh my gosh, you haven't taken a vacation in six years. How awesome would it be to earn a free vacation to Disney World for your whole family? Can you imagine? Cincy could give that to you. So find what it is that they need in their life. Find what it is that, that they're passionate about or that they need to change in their life, that they want to change in their life, and hit on their emotional cords. Make sure that you paint a picture of what their life could be with Cincy. But again, short, sweet, to the point, one or two sentences. And the last thing you want to do is you want to hand them a possibility packet before you end this conversation. There's tons of videos online on YouTube about possibility packets. I don't believe I've done one yet, um, but I do know that Katie Farner has done one. She has a great one, and also Aspen Calhoun. Both friends of mine have great videos on possibility packets. To me, all a possibility packet is is information about joining the business. So it can look a lot of different ways. It can be a lot of different things, um, but just information on joining the business. Definitely a showcase brochure um, or a product list in case they don't know a lot about Cincy some personal information from you, perhaps a letter or a trifold brochure of your own, maybe a sin circle, definitely a business card, just information about the business. And that's it. You're going to hand them that possibility packet, put in their mind the idea that they could do this, and then right before you walk away, you're gonna say, hey, do you mind if I friend you on Facebook? Or do you mind if I get your email and phone number? Just so I can let you know when there's some great specials coming up, get their contact information. This is super, super, super important. Because remember that notebook we talked about in Recruiting 101, session number one? You want to add them to your notebook so you will have opportunities to contact them in the future. So I hope you've learned a little bit today about recruiting conversations. In our next video, we'll be talking about follow-up and how to follow up with these recruit leads without being annoying or that person. So I hope you guys go out intentionally, have conversations to build your Cincy team. Thanks so much. Have a sensational day.